first thing you're gonna do once you get to your campground, of course, is get your truck unhooked from the trailer. Um, you'll do your primary leveling with your tongue jack here, your nose to tail. And then all these jacks on the four corners are called stabilizer jacks. They get ran down with a three quarter inch crank handle. Right. Like so. No locks or latches here. They just go down, come back up, and they'll stay put with friction. So that's gonna help with any kind of rocking in the unit that you're gonna get just from the suspension and the tires. Right. Um, and so once you've done that, now your main objective is gonna be get all your utilities into your camper. So get it fully hooked up, that way you guys can enjoy your camping trip. So that's going to be number one, water. Then we got sewer and power. Okay. So starting with water, um, it's all right here up front. You've got two different water connections here. One is for city water connection. If you're staying at a campground that has a water faucet on site mm -hmm. and you turn on that water faucet and it has pressure, that's when you'll just be using that faucet with a water hose hooked up to this city connection. And it's just a simple twist on. Regular water hose, or they do make uh, special drinking water hoses that help fight uh, algae buildup. Okay. So that's when you'll uh, turn the faucet on, you'll run off of their pressure. This other one next to it, the fresh water connection, this is if you wanted to add water to your fresh tank that you have on board. Um, so if you're staying somewhere that does not have water available, you can fill this with a hose and then you'll turn your water pump on inside and that's what's gonna pull from the fresh tank and it'll pressurize your unit. And what's the capacity there? Do you happen to know or? I'd have to check the brochure. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's probably around 30 gallons okay. if I have to guess. All right. Um, moving along, at the rear of the unit, you have a couple other things. Number one, your power cord. This is what's getting all of your electric into the unit. Um, use it simply just like an extension cord, but a real large extension cord. Has a twist lock with a collar on it for when you hook up. You can screw that on tight. Otherwise, when you're leaving, it detaches from your unit here and then detaches from the wall. When you're camping, you're gonna be looking for a 30 amp service. That's the universal. Um, pretty much every campground is going to have that. Okay. Hot cold shower plumbed into your water system. Now your sewer just below here. Probably do it while your slide is still in. That way you got a little bit more access of course. Um, that sewer cap is just a twist lock on. You're going to want to get a sewer hose and then this is gonna be a little different depending on where you stay. So if you're staying at a campground, is that where you guys are planning on doing most of your camping probably? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Most campground nowadays, they have a sewer drop right on site. Mm -hmm. So you get a sewer hose, you twist lock it on the end here. That's what these tabs are for. So it just twists locks on and then you drop it right into the ground where the hole is. And then you've got two different valves here. One is black and one is gray. The black's gonna be your toilet runoff the gray is going to be all your sink and your shower runoff. Okay, there you are, yes. yes. So once you get your uh, sewer hooked up, that's when you can go ahead and open up these valves. If you're doing a full dump, pull that black open, let it empty, then pull your gray, let it empty. It'll help wash down your hose. While that tank is still open, you can, of course, go inside and just push on the pedal in the toilet um, and or just drop a hose right down there, however you want to do it. But that'll help wash down any of the black tank and get it out. Now, if you don't have, if you're just out camping somewhere and, you know, by the lake or river or something like that, you don't have a regular hookup and stuff, any idea of the capacity on uh, the sewer and stuff? I doubt I, if we'll have that much. I'd have to check so. the, the brochure just because everyone's a little different. I can't keep them all up here. Okay. But I'd say probably 30 gallons gray and 20 black or something okay. like that. So lots of... Uh, yeah, yeah, they usually give you plenty. I mean, there's tons of tons of tank capacity in there okay very good so so that's going to be your main power sewer and water hookup um, to give you your utilities in your camper and the handles for the sewer they're just twist and pull i gather straight so, out yep okay. straight out and straight in i can actually show you on your fresh tank that's a, just a fresh water drop okay same handle though remember that fresh water tank i mentioned yes so uh, this is the drain to the freshwater tank. Okay. So same style handle, this one's just white. Okay. Pull it straight out, it empties. Very good. Push okay. it straight in, it closes. Okay, simple enough. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, working our way around now. 
This here is your water heater. Okay. Uh, this is a dual purpose water heater, meaning it can run on LP or it can run on electric, mm -hmm. or you can run both at the same time. You can do both at the same time, you can do either or, however you want to do it. The thing that you guys need to remember is the two different switches. There's one switch down here on the bottom left hand corner, that on off right there. Yes. That is going to be for the electric element. So if this is on, your electric element is on. If it's off, your electric element is off. Okay. I'll show you the switch inside where we have the gas. And same rule with the gas. If that switch is on, it's running on gas. If it's off, it's not running on gas. So if you have both switches on, it'll run both at the same time. Okay. Um, not really ever a need to do that. Your electric takes about 15 minutes to get hot. Your gas maybe five to 10 minutes to get hot. Okay. Um, it's only six gallons. You do have a pressure relief valve on the top here and you do have an anode rod on the bottom. Okay. Simple enough, okay. Other rule with your water heater, do make sure once you get your water hooked up and you have that turned on, it's usually easiest to just run right inside or you can use your outside shower over here. Mm -hmm. Turn a hot faucet on and just let it run. It would kind of water and then it'll spit and sputter air for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But once you get a steady stream of water out of that faucet, you know that your water heater is nice and full and then you're safe to turn it on. Very good. You just don't want to turn it on while there's may or may not be water in there. All right. Go over more of your hitching while we're doing it, of course. Otherwise, you do have a propane tank sitting right up front. This is a 20 gallon tank, regular barbecue connection here. So very simple twist lock like so. And then turn on the tank when you want to use it. These valves do need to be either all the way open or all the way closed. So if you're not using it, close it off. If you are using it, open it up. Okay. This strap just goes through your bottles here to help secure it. has this nice cover here. Goes in, makes a hole right there. Now we'll turn it. Okay. So that's gonna supply LP to you, isn't it? The only other things you have up here is your battery and battery box. Um, this is a propane regulator, obviously, coming off that tank. Nothing you got to do there. That they're already set. Any special cure anything I have to do with the battery or anything? Or No, these are non-maintenance batteries. So besides making sure it's charged, right. making sure the contacts don't get corroded, you know, okay. that'd be about it. And moving on down. So this solar charge is for if you want it to get, um, we call them briefcase packs, you know? Right. Those are those portable packs that you can set out, plug in, up to 10 amp charge on this. Right. But you do already have some solar on board. Right. That is what that device inside there with those blinking red lights, that's your solar charger. Right. So it's passively just maintaining that battery. I think you got 50 watts on the roof right now. And that is that. Okay, entry door steps here. Uh, these do take a little bit of knowledge to use. So door has to be mostly open for these to go in and out. Notice the clearance there, could be tight. It does have a blue latch there to keep it from surprising you. Otherwise, you just pull that latch open, let it come down once your door is all the way open. Make sure that it's touching the ground. If you need to, you can adjust these legs. That's what these pins on the side are for. If you pull one out, then you can now move it. Right. This handle is real simple. It just lifts right up and rotates for travel. outside camp kitchen or refrigerator. Uh, this will be 110 op or 110 power operated, so you only have use of this when you have shore power plug-in. Okay. Otherwise, little dial there for temperature. 
and or all the way off or off. Alright, so it's only working when you're plugged into electric. Okay. You got plug in, exactly. Okay. Okay. That's true. Outside entertainment, these speakers are run off your radio inside. I'll show you that when we get in there. And then you do have TV hookups here and 110 power. They use the same TV mount, that way you can just have one TV from in and out. Uh, this here is a furnace vent, so if you're heating the unit, it doesn't heat the unit with gas power, so there's a flame burning inside. So this will get a little warm, nothing too crazy, it's not like it's hot, but it will get a little warm being attentive to it. Spare tire and travel rack. The travel rack, hopefully the sticker's still there, does have a 200 pound weight limit. Okay. So keep that in mind if you're using it, otherwise... Just this front pin needs to come out and then it'll hinge How down. Can you fold it? Pardon? How can you fold that one since so you can flip it? Well, you take this uh, pin out. Okay. So this pin comes out and that drops okay. down. Yep. And, um, if it's different, you want to travel power security. Is there a separate? Nope, lamp? nothing separate. You use the same pins that you use. Here, I'll show you real fast. Okay. Same pins that you remove. Okay. Here. There. When this comes down, these pins will now install into the hole there, like so. Okay. Same thing on that end, obviously, and that's what's going to secure it in the flat position. And it is possible to detach this too, I see. So, yes. Okay. If you took this second pin out, then you could do away with the whole thing if you just wanted to set it in the garage. Okay. switches inside I'll show you very simple to use this room um, I just like to mention the first time you put it out on your camping trip do kind of pay attention just take a quick peek at your slide seals here make sure that they're all facing you and they're pointing to you instead of pushed in like so right if they are pushed in you can just stick your finger back there and pull it your way generally it'll do that on their own of course as the slide comes out but if they decide not to for whatever reason you can just pop them off And that should be just about everything on the outside. I know this is wire cable here. This here? Yes. What is yes. that for? This is the emergency disconnect switch for if there was a detach while towing for any reason. Okay. This gets pulled and it would lock up your trailer brakes. Okay. So this would be something whenever we're hooking up, we'll make sure to hook it up. Okay. It goes along with your chains. All right. I thought it was the lock. No, yeah, it's a towing raven. Okay. And we'll go ahead and head in. Actually, I'll show you your awning real fast before we head inside. Mm -hmm. Your awning switch is right here on the wall. It's a very simple push button system. This runs off battery power, so anytime you have battery power, you can use it. Okay. Might have enough room here. Let me see if I can get it. Oh. Pretty close. I'm trying to get you to see here. Dennis showed us the other day. Oh, okay, perfect. It's trying to come down. But yes, that's a, I'll show you that because that's your easy way to sit to tell you it's all the way out. Okay. Uh, you do have to be careful on the awning switch. Once it's all the way out, let off that switch. It's not going to stop itself. Mm -hmm. Other than that, a couple of functions you have with your awning are these pitch adjustment arms. So if you pull one side down, notice how that pitched the angle down. Right, so that's to drain water in case of rain or something like that? Well, really it's to help with the shade. These primarily are called sun shades. Mm -hmm. If you got a light drizzle and some rain, yes, you could use that to sheet the water off. But if you got any heavy rains or any heavy winds, it's best just to bring it on in. Yeah. Your awning is slightly delicate, so any kind of movement on its own can damage it. I'd like to join the word school now. Okay. Woo! Hi out there. Right. So I see awning switch here. Yes. I yes. see the 
slide out too. Perfect. Right. Yep. And I'll show you that coming in so that you get to hear what it sounds like. Okay. Um, and then switches, monitor panel. Uh, the two, okay, these two we mentioned earlier, water pump. This one, remember, you only need that on if you're pulling from your freshwater tank. Okay. So if you're coming from your freshwater tank, this is how you're pressurizing your unit. Gotcha. Water heater now, that's that LP operation. So if you want to run your water heater on gas, or LP, liquid propane. That's here, and so electrics the switch is out Outside, there. exactly. Um, this other secondary with this is that other glowing red light here. Uh, that's the FLT light or fault light. If it doesn't light for any reason, because it does have its own ignition sequence, that'll go on. Um, so that's just a visual indication that, hey, whoop, water heater didn't light, let's go. Usually if you turn the switch off and back on again, then it'll light. Okay. Awning lights. C-O-N-V light, I get this question all the time. Okay. What is that? I think it stands for convenience light. Okay. That's that small light oh, oh, we're outside, oh, outside, oh, uh, yeah. outside shower. I yeah. remember when Danny And the switch is over here. Now, don't ask me why they did <laughs> that's yeah, what they I remember did. when Danny told us about that. And one other cool thing while I'm here, this little sticker. Uh -huh. If you take a picture of that on your phone, it'll prompt you to uh, download the app. And on the app, you can do your lights and your slide and your awning all oh. from your cell phone. Oh, as long as you're within Bluetooth range, yeah. We'll be playing with that all day. Mm -hmm. so. okay. Digital readout of voltage right here. That's just mm -hmm. your battery level, of course. Okay. Radio right here. Very simple. This is uh, just like a regular radio. It does do Bluetooth streaming. And then these two buttons right up top. Zone one. If you push and hold that, that's how you're going to control the inside and outside speakers separately. So okay. your zone one is inside, your zone two is outside. So the way that we have it right now, zone two is on zone one is off so it's only okay. playing outside or you can do the opposite turn zone two off or you can or you can turn on at the same time or you can have both on exactly and now they're both on so let's see uh, EFFM, usb what's uh, bluetooth? bluetooth bluetooth yes you can stream off of your phone as well uh, it also does hdmi streaming if you had the hookup for it Right there on those RCAs, if you had a TV over here. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Standard headphone jack. So standard headphone jack and a standard auxiliary jack. Yes, I, I take it these are all just memory. Uh, Presets. Yep, yep. Perfect. All right. That seems simple enough. Storage, they got a lot of manuals and stuff in here. They're lucky to leave all that stuff in here. These are uh, the opposite sides of those TV mounts that was outside. Yes. It looks like they had put their own has some kind of style mount on there. Microwave is a regular microwave. Anytime you got plug-in power, you'll have use of it. Uh, the range here, push button for the lights. Now this one's a slightly tricky. It does have its own igniter on it, but to get it to spark, you just have to depress on the handle. Did you hear that? Yes. So as you're depressing on the handle, you can turn your gas on and then it'll light itself. Just like so. Both have their own burners. Both have their own igniters. With the cooktop, this is made of glass. So while traveling, make sure you have it down. While cooking, make sure you have it up. Okay. Light range fan, like I mentioned earlier. Just below the range here, this is your furnace. So this is how you heat your unit. And the thermostat to go with the furnace is right next to it here on the wall. Yes. This is separate from your air conditioner. So a completely separate system. Um, this is a manual readout of your temperature inside. And then this is just your colder or warmer. So if you flip it all the way to warmer, it'll turn your furnace on. Again, it has its own ignition cycle. So there's nothing you have to do to light Uh, your air conditioner while we're on the topic. Several different fan modes here. You'll have uh, low fan, high fan, low cool, and high cool. You just rotate the knob to go through those different settings. Uh, you'll have to rotate it all the way back around to get it to off. Wait, wait. There you go. Now that's off. If it's on fan mode, it's just moving air. It's not cooling the air. You have to turn it on to cool for it to get the cool air. And now, this dial, um, 
just to go over it because it can be deceiving. It does have a red on here, but that's only a visual indication for warmer. This doesn't produce any heat. That all comes from your furnace. And with this size of a unit, this unit is way larger than you're going to need. You'll notice I had it on low fan and about, yeah. I'm now nowhere near all the way cool. Yeah. Uh, being in, being in Florida, it's best to run it like this rather than full wide open. Full wide open, the humidity eventually will just cause it to freeze up and then it'll just constantly be cycling on, you know, on and off. So if you leave it like this, it'll get it cold in here in All right. Moving on back now, if we go to our refrigerator, uh, main power distribution center. Yeah, that's all storage, feel free. Okay. Open it up, take a look. So refrigerator and power distribution panel here. So this will be kind of similar to what you're seeing in your house where your breaker panel is. Mm -hmm. If you ever have any power issues, it will trip one of these breakers and you can just reset them. This side is all your 12 volt power, so all your lighting, your slide out, and all those kinds of things run off the battery power. If you ever have any power issues, you can change one of those uh, blade fuses. Now, the blade fuses, they're not a special type of blade fuse or anything, are they? These they're are your generic 12 volt blade fuse, yeah. Okay. No mini, no maxi, nothing like that. It's just blade fuse. Okay. Carbon monoxide and LP detector right here. This is a safety device. Kind of like a smoke detector, but this is monitoring for that LP and or carbon monoxide coming from a burning flame. Uh, so safety device, pay attention to it. it. It'll go off like a smoke detector. It's very okay. loud. You'll know when it's going off. Mostly what you need to know is that this green light is on when you're plugged in. You want to make sure that green light's on. That's telling you it's doing its job. Okay. Refrigerator and freezer. They just have little simple locks. Uh, this is 12 volt, right? This is a 12 volt refrigerator freezer, exactly. Uh, the switch to turn them on off is right here, this dial switch. This off grid that they're showing, if you're running off of pure battery power alone, they want you to set it somewhere between the first three. So all the way here is off, off grid, somewhere between the first three. Otherwise, this is just a coolness. If you turn it up, it'll get a little cooler even. Okay. Um, these cool down much faster than the old style refrigerators. It only takes about an hour for them to get down to 10, maybe two. Okay. Um, they say they're frost free, but they're not 100% frost free. So whenever you get home or you're done with your camping trip mm -hmm. and you're gonna turn that fridge off, just keep in mind there will be a little bit of moisture inside there. So it's good to get a towel, yeah. wipe it up before okay. it gets mildewy. Okay. More storage. Bathroom. It's all very simple in the bathroom. Except for I need to turn our water on. One second, I'm gonna go turn the water hose on. Let's have commercial. All right, got water, got water. So the toilet will, a couple of things you can do with this toilet. These are dry toilets, so they're made to run with that much water in it. Okay, very small amount. Um, you wanna travel with a very small amount, that's it. What you can do when you're camping to help with odors or scents and things like that, softly depress the pedal and it will fill the toilet bowl itself. That's perfectly fine. It'll hold that amount of water. Just make sure you're not traveling with it full. Yeah. Obviously, it'll slosh around in here. You don't want that. Okay. Now, um, is, that, is, that, is that drawing water from uh, the fresh water tank or only from the hose? Um, either. Okay. So the the fresh water tank, if you had the water pump running, okay. it would everything in here would operate as it's operating right okay. now. Okay. Right now, I have you hooked up to the city water, so we're just running off the building's pressure. Okay. Very yeah. good. Okay but uh, everything will behave exactly the same. There's no valves or switches you even have to do. It's all already all plumbed in. Second thing to keep in mind with your, your toilet before I miss, uh, miss the topic, this is the best place. There's no P-traps in an RV toilet. So this mm -hmm. is the best place. It goes straight into your black tank. 
-hmm. So if you're using those uh, black tank treatments or enzymes, mm -hmm. which I definitely recommend, all you have to do is open the pedal and drop them straight down into the tank. It's the easiest way to get inside. And you usually do one of those per trip, generally? Or? Depending on usage, probably one a trip should be perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're staying in an extended trip, I would yeah. just say anytime you totally empty your tanks, if you know your tank is empty, go ahead and be proactive. Put about a gallon of fresh water in one of your treatments in there and just let it settle. Uh, pretty much every time you empty that tank, if you just put a treatment in. Where can we get that treatment? Oh, uh, anywhere. So Walmart, Walmart, okay. Amazon, oh. here, wherever. Okay. And your shower here, nothing too special with the shower that I gotta go over. It's like a regular shower in your house. I would say the only special thing would be they have these heads on them which can conserve water if need be. So you can set the temperature to where you like it and then use this dial to conserve some water. Okay. You know, turn it on, soap up, or wet down, turn it on, turn it off kind of deal. And that also goes for the little... Can, you, can we hang a mirror here or no? Yeah, sure, absolutely. As long as you don't use anything longer than... I would use like a one inch screw. Yeah. It'd be perfect. Okay. Uh, you do have an exhaust vent in here as well. Simple crank handle, opens it up, push button, turns fan on. Very important. Yes. Uh, it's really useful as well when you're taking a shower, mm -hmm. just get the humidity out of here. Okay. That's a good idea. Yeah. So. Otherwise, that's the bathroom. Okay. So the dinette table here, this does go down into extra sleeping if you like. Okay. Easiest way to do it is go ahead and remove these cushions on the side. Just like so, if you would flip that up. Just like so. Okay. Now the trick to getting these down, uh, the pegs are free floating, meaning they'll come out of the floor right here, they'll also come out of the table right here. Okay. So sometimes if you just lift the table up, you're not sure where the pegs are gonna go and they'll fall on you. So I give them a little twist. Give them a little twist to unlock them, and then you can grab the table right from the bottom. Okay. Set it here for a second while we move these out of our way. Full. Yeah. So you just complete the uh, assembly here with your back cushions. travel with the table down or up it has velcro so it'll stay put the only thing I would advise is these are gonna have to be put somewhere where they're not gonna roll around you know USB on that side. Yes. Yeah, USB chargers. Uh, the lighting in your slide is all just a push button right there in the center. Same thing with all your main lights here. You can turn all of them on and off just by clicking the center. Okay. One there as well. 
TV is just a regular TV. The only special thing on your TV is this button right here. That's the digital TV antenna. It's a booster, so it does need 12 volt power to get all your channels. So as long as it's on, uh, that's when you'll want to do your channel search, and then you'll get all your locals. Okay. Oh, so then, okay, I understand what you're saying now. So. It has an antenna on board, so you can get all your local channels, yeah. Okay. It's an HD digital, so even the new style TV they got. Right. Show you the bed. That might be about it. Yeah, except for the slider. So yeah, the slider. Yes, yes. So the couch uh, armrests just come right off. Nothing holding them in. The bed lift from the bottom, pull straight to you. Also, keep in mind you got storage under there. And the mattress is just one flip. Like so. Got a bed. And you got a bed. Same thing with these lights, the push pin. Okay. Mm -hmm. And just wardrobe space. I don't think they got anything hidden in here. No. Nope. So that's easy. I can do this, this too. So just push it like that. And then... Just like so, that quick. Yeah. This here, they're trying to upsell you on one of their like Bluetooth speakers, but you do have USBs right there, so right. those are wired in. You can use those. Same thing over here, USB chargers. This, how, this how can we pull this up and down? These are just by friction, so oh, okay. they'll stay up by friction. Same thing coming down, they just stay put where they're at. But that is a good question. This is an emergency exit window right here. Um, you can use this just for ventilation if you would like. Just pop this tab out. It's got a small detent there it can rest on, so you can just open it like that. Otherwise, in an emergency, you push it all the way through, and then you pull your screen out, and you can use it as an exit. plugged in it's going to be impossible to tell if this is on and off okay. your unit makes its own 12 volt power while you're plugged in right but if you have this off while plugged in your battery won't be charging so it's best to have it on okay all right well, i guess the only other thing I'm in this solar, solar. Yeah. solar? Mm -hmm. we've, got, we've got a 50 watt panel on top okay yep and it's always just passively charging it has its own controller up front Yep, yep. Alright, so, so now the slider. Alright, so step over what, here. What about this one? Uh, yeah, that's a 110 power outlet. This is actually your GFI, too. Good call. Uh, this is just like the outlet in your bathroom, how it tests and reset. Right, okay. Right in the middle. Um, so if you notice on any of the other outlets, they must have taken the stickers off of them. Like in your bathroom here, you see that sticker that says GFCI protected? Okay. Yeah. So that's going to all be on the same circuit protection as this GFI here. So, so we, we can use like a purity right here. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's just a sink cover for more counter space. What's that? And keys. So this is a common question I get. Push on the power button, once mm -hmm. it goes red, this is off. That's as off as it goes. Okay. Yeah. Now, bringing the slider in. It will get a little tight in here. Oh. Only thing you really oh. gotta pay attention to 
before bringing your slide in is that there's nothing in front of it. Okay. Even if you have a small rug or something like that, it could get caught up, so it's best just to pull it out of the way. Then, this is a computer controlled system, so you push on the switch, it takes a second for it to get going, and then you can remain depressing the switch, the slide will stop itself. Same rule going out. It'll come all the way, and then once it gets to its resting spot, the motors will hear it go totally silent. Like so, see how I'm still on the switch? Okay. So once you hear it go totally silent, that's how you know you're all the way in. Same thing when you're going out. You'll hear it go totally silent, and you know you're all the way out. So once it's in, mm -hmm. no room. Can't go no to the room. bathroom. Nope. <laughs> Slide's gotta come out for that. And is there anything special you have to do outside once it's in or everything's taken care of? Everything's taken care of. You just push the switch. It locks itself wherever you stop it. Um, do only run it either all the way in or all the way out. You don't okay. want to leave it halfway because it'll leak. Okay. Yeah. Oh. It's not that it's gonna damage anything, but if it rains, it'll leak inside of you. So all the way out or all the so way out. So where's, where's the button for that? Right there. Slide in, slide out. Okay. Yep, yep. And it's computer controlled, so you really can't mess it up. Yeah. And keys. Okay, these are all the same. So. are going to be for your entry door, the silver key is going to be for your baggage doors, that black key is going to be that outside shop door, or the silver key will also be. These separate by right there, and it will latch on its own in the door frame there. So if you want to have that, and it also has a little slider here, so if you wanted just an enclosed screen room, you can't mm -hmm. do that. Otherwise, this lifts and will just stay attached onto the door. Okay. And before we told you, yep, that's your deadbolt right there. Inside, you notice? It's kind of like a deadbolt. Mm -hmm. Just like so. You can't lock the handle from the inside, just the deadbolt. On the outside, you can lock the handle. We need to put your steps in first. Oh, you're good. I can throw that away. So, I see two uh, keys here. Yes. Top one is just the handle lock, which 